Okay, now it's a diagnosis no parent wants or quite frankly ever expects. Brain cancer kills more children in Australia than any other disease. But today there's some new hope for those being treated with a new grant of $5 million for an innovative childhood cancer program. Yeah, we'll hear a little bit more about that later today when it's announced by the Prime Minister and the Health Minister. But to tell us more about why we're here, we're joined by the Executive Director of the Children's Cancer Institute, Michelle Haber. And with us as well is Danielle and Daryl Squires. They lost their daughter Monique to brain cancer last year. Good morning to all of you and welcome to News Breakfast. Um, uh, can I start with both of you, um, Danielle and, and Daryl? Tell us about your girl Monique. How old was she when she was diagnosed? Monique was, um, just before her fourth birthday, was diagnosed with DIPG. Uh, what, Monique, is DP, what is that? It's a uh, diffuse intrastic pontine glomoma. Yeah, it's a, it's a big word and we didn't know uh, anything about DIPG, uh, let alone uh, childhood uh, brain cancer. Sure. Uh, we later found out it's the number one killer in children, so it was quite a shock to us, uh, you know, when Monique was diagnosed with this horrific disease. Um, Monique was a happy, bubbly, everyday three-year-old, playing with her sisters, loved collecting things outside, um, just a real nature girl. And to then, then you know, um, have the symptoms of, um, well, she all of a sudden got dizzy, um, wasn't feeling well, headaches, just, yeah, just wasn't herself. And what did the doctors say were her options, your options for treatment? Um, well, I guess after we sort of went to the hospital and then found out, yeah, it was a, a, a brain cancer, our options were very minimal. We were just told, they're, sorry, there is nothing um, for Monique, uh, unfortunately. And, and we were just like, just in shock. We just didn't, couldn't believe there was absolutely nothing out there, no chemo drugs. So we're kind of just left with the option of uh, radiotherapy, which helps um, reduce the tumour just for a short time, then it grows back again. It's very aggressive tumour. So, yeah. Michelle, this must be a really difficult area to work in then when you're, you're dealing with, as, as we just heard, you know, the, the number one killer, killer in young children and there's so little you can do. Yes, I know. Um, brain cancer is, it does kill more children, as you've heard, than any other form of cancer. There's about 70 children diagnosed every year in Australia with these high-risk cancers. DIPG is the very worst of them, but there's a, a whole number of, of these. And fewer than 4 in 10 of these children are going to survive their disease. And that's a terrible statistic that hasn't changed. And what's exciting is that this new program that's being announced is going to give us the ability we genuinely believe to turn this around and to give new options so that doctors aren't saying there's nothing that we can do for children. And I believe that it's, um, it's more targeted to uh, allowing uh, treatment to be more targeted to individuals, is that That's right? That's exactly right. So the Zero Childhood Cancer Program is, is the single largest initiative for children with uh, cancer in this country. And it's based on the premise that, that the one child, uh, one size fits all approach sim simply doesn't work. Mm. And that what we need to do is to uh, analyse in great detail the genetic and biological characteristics of each child's cancer. And in doing so, we will be able to identify the the drugs that have the best chance of working on that individual uh, child. Yep. And so that program, we did a pilot study of that um, uh, over the last couple of years, a national clinical trial involving every children's hospital uh, in Australia and 19 national and international medical research institutes all collaborating. Uh, the, the trial opened in September last year. Uh, so far, Half of the children are on that program are high-risk brain cancers, which really demonstrates the extent of the problem. And this funding that's being announced this morning will allow us to expand this program specifically in the area of brain tumours. Mm, right. Daryl, I just wanted to ask you, Monique um, has, has a twin, yep. um, um, a sister. She's doing okay? Yeah, no, she's going all right. She has uh, got days off, so when she's struggling, she misses her little uh, her friend, her little sister. So. Yeah. But, she, but she's physically okay. You, you must have yeah. worried when, you know, no, one, yeah, when one twin um, is unwell, it's the immediate yeah. thought, my goodness, how's the other? Yeah, I like every yeah. time they get a cough or, or feel a bit unwell, you obviously start panicking again. You just live under that shadow. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Yep. Is there anything you think that will take you out from under that shadow? Oh, 
probably a bit of time, but mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, a hard, a hard road. Yeah. How, how do you feel about this program? That's more money going into a program to specifically analyse those tumours. Yeah, well, it's it's great news, um, and it get, does give families and children hope that we, hopefully we can change that zero percent survival rate um, in the future. And you know, that's what we hope for. Yeah. And uh, everyone will as well. Well, it's a, a, a terrific sum of money and some, some great news for you and all your colleagues as well, as well who work in the field. Keep up the good work. Yeah, thank Michelle, you. thank you for joining us today. It's a um, and um, thanks to both of you for coming in here today. We know your other kids are outside. Shall we give them all a wave? Yes. They're, they're, they're watching us here on, on camera. <laughs> thanks for coming in.